You know him. You love him in primetime here on the Fox News Channel. Although you'd probably love him more. If only he promoted his book a bit more on the channel this week. Do I, f- I, feel do like I have a book out? <laughs> Good for you! <laughs> the author of Get It Together, Troubling <laughs> Tales from the Liberal Fringe. It is a- available everywhere. Fine books are sold. Jesse Waters, back in the house. Hey, girl. Do you know how you know I have a book out? Mm-hmm. Because I'm on your show. Thank you! You want to know something? I said that. I said you have the radio appearance schedule of a groundhog, meaning it's a significant day. <laughs> if we see you on 15, we know what's going on. we got to move some product. The last time I was out not numbered also had the book out. Good for you. <laughs> well, you're going to laugh. Uh, the last time I was on outnumbered, although I will have you know, they would probably have you on more frequently. Whereas I, if I don't have a product, they're not. No, know. I actually think you've been banned. Yeah. <laughs> After the last appearance. It's for the best. Yeah, you're not allowed back. Do you want to know my best outnumbered? Because we have to get to the book. Because I'm like the one interview you're going to do where the guy reads it the first week. I don't doubt a lot of them are going to read it. But you and I were talking off air. Right. Well, okay. We're just proud that you can read. Yeah, there's that. All right. Shots already fired. And we'll get there then. All right. We'll get there. Yeah. And I defended you on Gutfeld this week because they photoshopped a picture of you bald. Have you seen this on Greg's show? I have show? not. I don't watch Greg's show. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. He's yeah. fired up. But anyway, I was on Outnumbered one day and I just laughed. It was the day of the Chinese spy balloon incident. But it was one of those days where for a cause we're all wearing red. So the whole Outnumbered couch is wearing red. And we did an hour on China and the spy balloon. <laughs> Oops. And that's where the on-air promos can bite a guy in the butt, you see? But we'll move forward. The book, it's Get It Together, Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe. Now, a lot of people would say, Waters, that this might just be a collection of a bunch of TikTok weirdos. But the truth is there are some Instagram weirdos as well. And I want to start there. Uh, it's the vegan Instagrammers you spoke to because we specifically spend a lot of time on your set talking about whatever protein I'm trying to sell myself <laughs> yes. as a means of not having to wear Spanx on the air when I host my show. Yes. The note that jumped out at me is you talk about how anyone who gets steak ordered well done is disrespecting the animal. <laughs> <laughs> That. Now, can that be squared with Trump, though? Because I was told Trump is a well-done guy and Trump loves you. I love him, too, but the way he eats his steak is just uncivilized. <laughs> is he? Give me this really quick. Is Trump putting ketchup on a steak? I wouldn't be surprised. This, this man... <laughs> And he eats ice cream, too, and I have a rule for men not to eat ice cream in public except... If you're on vacation. Fair. Because you don't want to be sticking your tongue out a lot in public. Yeah, yeah. Something not very masculine about that when you see a man licking an ice cream cone. (laughs) Use a a spoon if you have to. It's a great mafia line where they go like, the Don doesn't wear shorts. There are certain (laughs) optics. There are (laughs) straws banned for men. You will never see me sucking out of a straw. No, no, that's humiliating. You don't want to be in that picture. Well, then give me this then to that point since we're talking optics and we'll get right back into the book. Over the summer, we saw Biden on the beach. We saw his C-cup breasts for like three weeks. Don't you just think as a country we shouldn't be showing our male president's breasts to the world regardless of who it is? You reach a certain age where you have to have the self-awareness to know that you don't look good. Mm -hmm. You haven't gotten there yet. (laughs) You will. I've seen you with your shirt off. I'm just going to take it. You haven't turned down a photograph ever. No, no. But at at 80, wherever he is, you got to have a T-shirt, or at least you have to go to a private beach. Yeah. (laughs) Not in the middle of a Delaware public beach. It's not happening. Jesse Waters is in studio. Uh, He has a new book out this week, so we decided to book him. That's stupid. Use your common sense. I kid. We love Waters. Thank he's, you. He's a number one New York Times bestselling author. Uh, I will say this. Uh, the next thing that really jumped out at me was, and I just want to make sure I understand this, was the Toad Smoker on primetime? Last night. Yes, that's the same person. The Toad Smoker came on. Yes. And he told the story about when he goes south into Mexico, he yeah. goes to the tribal regions, yeah. the reservations where they have this toad, mm-hmm. and he secretes the venom from it, cooks it up, smokes it, and he smokes it with one of the most lethal cartel assassins. Mm. She's a female. A woman, right? And she saw God. Mm -hmm. And imagine murdering 400 people and then seeing God. (laughs) Not a good conversation. (laughs) So she flipped out, had a bad trip, and he's never heard from her or seen her again. And that's probably a good thing. (laughs) Yeah, the weird people you meet on Tinder these days. (laughs) Uh, I laugh, though. So the toad smoker jumped out at me because I think... You know how they say in pro sports, the athletes are ahead of the dopers, like in the Tour de France? 
I think the thrill seekers are ahead of society. It's like technology is ahead of us because there's a lot of that out there. This gentleman uh-huh. who we interviewed, the toad smoker, it's his religion. Yeah. And we had him on last night, and my producer said he was hot. Uh-huh. And none of the other people in this book are hot. <laughs> and this guy had great posture. He Wait. was breathing. He was articulate. The guy that smokes toad venom yes. might have been the most well-adjusted together guy I interviewed. But, but, but are you going to tell me on record right now that the trans woman who identifies as a wolf is not hot? Oh! I gotta say something. She might not be hot on paper, but those are usually the best time. You know what I mean? She's a good time. Maybe not this particular woman. I'm just saying in general. He's a good time. Yeah, well, there's that. (laughs) Not that there's anything wrong with that, Jimmy. Listen, it's a long season. Nobody goes undefeated. (laughs) Jesse Waters is here. The book, Get It Together. It's available everywhere. We're excited about it. Uh, What percentage, this is something I didn't specifically cite in the book, but what percentage of, like, activists, weirdo activists, would you say are white? Because I feel like we're monopolizing this lane a lot. I would say most of them are white and most of them are women. Yeah. And we did speak to a black nationalist, Mm -hmm. obviously Mm African-American. And I believe the toad smoker may have been an indigenous tribesman of the Southwest. (laughs) But besides that, a majority of these people are white and they have white guilt. Yes, what it is. And they've had traumatic childhood experiences, either Mm -hmm. a barstool dad or a nymphomaniac mom, Mm -hmm. maybe sexually abused. And they're either seeking revenge against America, they have daddy issues, but these are not always poor people. Some of these people, like the woman who wants to legalize prostitution, uh, she grew up very wealthy and ended up stripping at 16, then to crystal meth, then into the sex trade. Okay. Um, well, no, I, the thing I kept coming back to is the common thread here is bad parenting. Correct. And you can, and a lot of people equate good and bad parenting with financial means, but the truth is a lot of good parents are poor. Some of the and, worst parents yes, are wealthy. Yes, that's And you know <laughs> their sons and daughters are probably the most disturbed people. Thank you. All right, the reason I bring that up, because this is a, 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 almost an end around back to Trump, okay? Sometimes people have tried to discredit Trump because they say, like, oh, his dad was loaded. But how many people do you know whose parents are loaded so they don't amount to anything because they don't have that primal imperative to succeed? Isn't it almost an outlier if your parents are loaded, but you have that competitive drive? So... Not only do they have a competitive drive, they don't smoke, they don't drink. Yeah. Joe Biden didn't grow up with a lot of money, yeah. and his son is a disaster. Yeah, think about that. And why? Because Joe Biden couldn't tell Hunter to get it together. No. Oh, he, there it is. He was never told no as a child. Uh-huh. He was always enabled, and every time he fell flat on his face, he was saved. Yep. Either the coke in the Navy or continuously leaving crack pipes and rental cars. Mm -hmm. He was always bailed out. Uh And that's why you have to have boundaries. And this son had no boundaries. And that's why we have no boundaries in this country now. Thank you. And that's why people need to get it together, as he would say. The one thing that has been admirable during this stretch of media I've watched you do, I even saw it today on Outnumbered. Whenever you had to make a point, you made a point with the book in your hand. <laughs> I actually, it was raining yesterday. Instead of putting his jacket over for a puddle for a woman, he put get it together in the puddle. You know what I was going to do? What was it, the Academy Awards, when the actor came out buck naked? Yeah, yeah. I should have just Cena. done that with my book <laughs> below my waist. He's going to stage a robbery outside the building where he beats off a robber with a copy of the book. I'm going to beat him off. (laughs) Hey, well, listen, the rent don't pay itself. Uh, Give me this, okay? Yes. The Waters family's going away. They're all jerseyed out for the weekend. Okay, you got to pick one person from this book to watch the house. Is it the emotional support squirrel caretaker? No, I'll give you three choices. Okay. Emotional support squirrel. (laughs) Is this like Mary F. Kill? No, I just want to, who watches the house? Because the one thing I know about you is you do find value in these people, meaning you like them. Yes. I don't think you wrote about these people from a place of disdain. I have compassion, and many people are surprised yep. that I actually have emotions, that yeah. I have a heart. Mm-hmm. But I do. No, you and, do. And, and many people see me on television as this rough, gruff, masculine guy that mm-hmm. never cries. But I actually feel things for people. Yeah. And, and that's what I want to get across, Jimmy. Uh, he's, he's trying to help you. Get it together. That's the point. I'm listening. This is not for him. This is he did this for you, America. This is a public service. (laughs) This is the Jesse Waters Foundation. So give me this. So okay, we have the The Chateau Waters. Okay, emotional support squirrel caretaker, trans woman who identifies as a wolf or toad smoker. Who gets the keys to the house? 
in good faith that it'll be in one piece when you get back. I'm going with the trans wolf man. You say so. And here's why. Mm -hmm. The emotional support squirrel caretaker was so unself-aware that she took the pet squirrel on an airplane. No. And then was arrested and dragged off by U.S. Marshals, and she didn't think she'd done anything wrong. Uh Uh-huh. And then what was the other choice? The toad smoker, I'd worry... About the police. Yeah, that's an issue. And <laughs> the garden's going to run into some problems. I'd worry about my property. <laughs> and 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 the, but the, but I'd probably go with the wolf man mm-hmm. because what's the worst he's going to do? Yeah. What is he going to howl at the moon? What is he going to invite some of his friends Raven over? <laughs> no. I, I think we're going to be fine with no. the wolf. And he won't appreciate us saying this, but the truth is, a full moon doesn't actually affect him. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's where he does his best work. <laughs> He'd like you to believe. I believe he does. Uh, the book is called Get It Together, Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe. I honestly, I genuinely thought it was a great read, but where I was emotionally invested was in the protein stuff. So if you guys are going to buy this, know that most of our friendship uh, in, in a fleeting friendship that we have on TV sets really revolves around whatever <laughs> protein I'm trying to eat. Our TV friendship. Yeah, that's what it is. That, that four minutes that you come on set, declare yourself the ratings fairy. It matters. And then we talk about how you're trying to lose weight. <laughs> that, but I tell people this that is what happens and it's working you know what manny told me in wardrobe yesterday yes my measurements are down everywhere since i got my show because this high protein fiasco works well ansley says that being on tv is the best diet no is it ever because you're looking at yourself on the screen (laughs) there's no greater feeling once in a while you get an elevator and you're like who's that fat and you're like oh my god (laughs) it is me so i will go get it together you will buy multiple copies of the book waters we'll always have this i'll see you in like three years when the next one comes out i'll see you in three years get it together (laughs) there he goes jesse waters get him out of here (laughs) get him out